can see 180 pounds of love here. A lonely 14-year-old kept his gruesome secret for a week while the nation searched and prayed for a missing girl. Number 12 on our list of shocking crimes, the murder of Maddie Clifton. I don't think I was ever a monster. It was a horrible thing that happened, but it wasn't malicious. It wasn't because I was a monster. Around 5 p.m. on Tuesday, November 3rd, 1998, Maddie Clifton went out to play in the Lakewood neighborhood of Jacksonville, Florida. The eight-year-old never returned. Maddie, please come home. Mom and Daddy and Jesse are ready for you to come on home. The media was off the chain on this. Maddie Clifton became the face of Jacksonville. People were showing up by the hundreds to help look for this little girl. We're looking for Maddie. The search for Maddie Clifton went on for seven days, but ended in the neighborhood where it began. We found Maddie Clifton this morning. She was dead. Joshua Phillips, age 14, has been arrested and is in custody. The young suspect seemed like a normal ninth grader with no history of violence or behavior problems. I was very solitary, very alone. Josh's father, Steve Phillips, dominated his wife and son. Steve was a huge man, six and a half feet tall, and his temper was explosive. I remember opening the door in my parents' bedroom and see my dad's arm through the wall, like that far, you know? And it's like, wow, that was uh, scary, you know? I was terrified of my dad, you know? Steve Phillips had strict rules for his son. I wasn't supposed to play with anyone until my parents were home. Maddie Clifton lived across the street. Oh, my gosh. Maddie was a cool kid. She was smart. She was all about having fun. She could be a little girl, and she could be a tomboy. She could wear a ballerina outfit just as well as her, her soccer or her basketball stuff. Josh was in the house alone when Maddie asked him to play baseball. Phillips agreed, even though he wasn't allowed to have friends over before his parents came home. Josh hit a ball to bat that hit Maddie uh, and hurt her, and that started the uh, screaming and the uh, fear within Josh that he had done something wrong that he might be punished for. According to court documents, Josh said he took Maddie into his bedroom. The eight-year-old girl was bleeding and crying. Josh knew his father would be home soon. He grabbed the baseball bat. He hit her, shoved her underneath that bed. Dad came home. He was interacting with Dad. He could hear something coming from his room attributed to Maddie. He went back and opened up the bed and stabbed her. She had multiple stab wounds to her body, about nine. I think the kid panicked. And when he did, he killed her. During the week Maddie was missing, Josh kept his awful secret. Going home and crawling in bed, knowing that she's dead under his bed at night. I was stuck in, in the illusion that it was hopefully going away because it was all I had to grasp onto. Maybe my life could go on normally if it would just disappear. That was just my kid's mind, you yeah. know? By Tuesday, November 10th, the smell of Maddie's decomposing body was overpowering. Missy Phillips decided to clean up her son's bedroom. She noticed a wet spot on the floor next to the waterbed. I thought, oh, don't tell me this has been leaking so long. Just as soon as I started to sort of manipulate the side of the bed, her leg came down and hit my hand. Intellectually, I knew, but emotionally, I thought, this can't be what I think it is. It just cannot be. She went out and notified the police. So they locked down the perimeter. And the rest of the investigation started from there. Josh was taken from school and booked at the juvenile detention center. Phillips confessed to police. According to court documents, Josh said he murdered Maddie because he was afraid of his father. It was him that created the atmosphere that I lived in. I don't think it would have happened if he wasn't there. I blame Steve quite a bit for where Josh is. To be an innocent eight-year-old playing in your own neighborhood and to have your life taken by a kid that's afraid to get in trouble, that, you know, it makes absolutely no sense. 
Eight months later, in the summer of 1999, Josh was tried as an adult. And if you believe, as he said, that he thought about getting in trouble with his father and then decided to drag her inside to crush her skull repeatedly, that is premeditated murder. The jury agreed. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of murder in the first degree. The guilty verdict carried a mandatory sentence, life in prison without parole. To Joshua Phillips, we have but one thing to say. How dare you? How dare you take Maddie from us for no reason? She was your friend, and you brutally murdered her. I wish I could take it back. I wish I could take it back. I wish that Maddie was still here. She was really a chance to live. Josh Phillips is currently serving his sentence at Hardy Correctional Facility in Florida. Steve Phillips was killed in an auto accident in 2000. Missy Phillips visits her son every month and has an attorney appealing Josh's case. If it was society's view that children, if they do this, are irredeemable, then I would think that I should be here. But the fact is, I know that I'm not the same person. I know I'm different. There's nothing in me that, that wants to hurt anybody. Coming up, the shocking story of a 16-year-old video game addict turned real-life killer.